Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, and welcome to today's session. How are you doing? I pray that all is well with you and your families at this time. So as we're going through the Gita, we're learning newer and newer principles about life that we can apply to improve ourselves and to synchronize our lives with nature and the laws of nature so that we can live comfortably guided by the laws of God. So as we are studying the life of Arjuna in this particular event where he's caught up in a trauma, where he's caught up in a huge decision whether to fight or not to fight, he's being guided by Krishna who's advising him about the principles of life which he never got to learn. He learned about life from experience. He had very good education in military science, but nobody taught him how to handle situations in life. And I think that's where we can really relate to Arjuna and relate to the Bhagavad Gita, that it's a manual to help us understand life and how to work within the dynamics of life. So as a human being, we are also guardians of this planet that the Supreme Lord has also made us guardians of this planet so that we can live in harmony with nature. And a vital part of understanding that is understanding what is our rights as human beings. <laughs> we know our political rights in what we've developed among societies and communities. But what is the right of a human being according to the principles of God? This is an interesting question. This is what we're going to learn today in Bhagavad Gita. So as we approach this, Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse number 47. Karmani eva dikaraste ma phala sukadachana ma karma phala he turbur ma te sango svakarmani Translation, you have a right to perform your prescribed duties. So the first lesson we're learning about work and what is the prescribed work or the way a human being should conduct themselves. This is an axiomatic principle of life. And we need to know this because we may be following the laws of society created by man, but are we following the laws of nature created by God? <laughs> this is a very, very interesting question. And the first defining principle is what is the work? How does a human being act? How does a human being with knowledge act? How does he understand what he's able to do and what is his right and what is not? So Krishna is first describing this, that Arjun, you have a right to do your duty. <laughs> That's your only right. <laughs> oh, but what about the results of it? What about the fruit of it? Well, let's see what answer Krishna gives Arjuna. But you are not entitled to the fruits of action. So he's saying indirectly that you are entitled to the right to do the work, but the fruits of it, mm -mm, you're not entitled. <laughs> then you may say, well, I did the work. Ah, that is where the problem lies, that we think we are the doers. Karmadi evadika reste mafala sukadachana. Arjun, you are only entitled to do the work. You are not the sole heir of the fruits of the results of your work. There are so many other factors combined to create the opportunity for you to do your work, which you are not thinking of, which you are not aware of. You are completely oblivious or disconnected from nature. Therefore, you don't consider nature as, as one of the primary factors facilitating your work. <laughs> and Arjuna is learning now. Oh yes, yeah, right. Because if it wasn't through nature, where would I get my energy from? And if I didn't have the energy, then how do I do the work? So you can see within the human society, we feel that money has bought us the right to inherit something. But we forget that we cannot inherit nature. We cannot inherit Mother Nature. That is a gift from God. Therefore, if we serve with her, then we can enjoy. If we exploit her separately, then this is what is the result. Look at the world today. Are you happy with the world today? <laughs> this is the exploitative mentality that comes when one is disconnected from himself and nature. 
So here in India, this is the verse that every Hindu knows. Hmm? Karma di eva di And they translate this as work is worship. Have you heard this? Work is worship. So it's a good concept, but it doesn't carry you all the way. <laughs> they forget the second part. Ma fala su kadachana. You are not entitled to the fruits of your activity, Arjun. <laughs> Why is that? Let's learn why. Never consider yourself the cause of the results of your activities. So, if you consider yourself the only cause, then how did your body get the energy to do that work? It got it from Mother Nature. So that means Mother Nature is also a cause. If you don't see nature as part of the cause, and if you feel you're the only cause, then where did you get the air to breathe to do the work? Where did you get the water to drink to do the work? Where did you get the energy which you digested as food from nature to do the work? So now you see there's so many other factors here. <laughs> there's so many other factors. Because if we think that my hand is doing the work, then we can get up tomorrow morning and the hand won't work. So if it's your hand, make it work. <laughs> if it's your hand and you doing the work, then why is your hand not working under your direction today? You're completely paralyzed on one side. The one leg is not working. The one hand is not working. So if you are the doer, make your leg work. Make your hand work. No, you can't. So it's a very deep understanding and it's a practical one that a self-centered person will think that he is the only cause of his work. But a broad-centered or a God-centered person, a person who's centered on self-realization, the Aryan culture, that person will understand, no, I'm symbiotically connected to nature because my body comes from nature. And due to that, nature is also a cause in my work. Therefore, how can I take all the results? This is where the understanding of charity has come. That one does charity because he understands, I'm only taking my quota. The rest of it also belongs to different aspects of nature. And society and people is also one part of nature. So you see how broad the concept becomes? Fascinating, isn't it? Let's learn more. Now, there's a very interesting part of human nature that we only want the results when we do good deeds. Why don't you want the results when you do bad deeds? <laughs> Why don't you quote this verse when you did bad deeds? Because you don't want the bad results. You only want the good results. <laughs> Therefore, you can see from that understanding that it's incomplete because results is dependent on the work. If the work or the activity was bad, the result would be a bad result. And if the work was good, the result would be a good result. That's by nature. But by choice, which means your individual understanding, you only want the good. And that immediately tells you you're not synchronized with nature. You're not synchronized with the world and how you are not synchronized with the world and how God has planned the world to evolve. So he continues and never be attached to not doing your duty. So this is our old friend, Hridai Dorlabya, the weakness of heart. When the heart becomes weak and doesn't give you the strength or the courage to do your duty. And today Krishna used the word never. He says, never be attached to not doing your duty. So we attach to something, but what is that? Not doing anything. <laughs> we don't want to do our duty. Therefore, this principle of being duty-centered, we remember we discussed this earlier on, is the first level of being connected to your higher nature. So Prabhupada gives a very deep purport regarding karma and understanding the principle of work for a human being. So let's take a look at this as we explore this further in the next chapter, chapter 3. But for now, he's just making us aware of these concepts. So let's look at this purport. There are three considerations here. So there are three things to consider here. Let's see what they are. Number one, prescribed duties. Number two, capricious work. And number three, inaction. So what are these three things? These are three aspects of work that a human being does, but at different levels of consciousness. So let's look at this carefully. It describes here. Prescribed duties are activities 
enjoined in terms of one's acquired modes of material nature. So prescribed duties are acquired by nature. That means it's at the level of the body. That means when he's talking about prescribed duties here, he's talking about dharma at the level of the body. So Krishna has also spoken about dharma at the level of the soul, but now he's starting to explain work or dharma at the level of the body. So let's see, that's the first one. And then he goes on. And then the second one, Capricious work means action without the sanction of authority. Uh, so we have two main authorities in our lives, especially if one is following the path of introspection, the path of self-realization, or one is trying to understand oneself deeper. Then there's two authorities that you have. Oh, two authorities? <laughs> yes, there's two authorities. One is the mentor or the spiritual guide that is guiding you. And the other one is your mind. And you find in the beginning stages, we constantly vacillating. We moving between the mind and the guru, the guru and the mind. Sometimes never mind the guru. Sometimes guru says, don't worry about the mind. <laughs> So this fight is always going on because by nature we're not settled in the beginning stage and we are trying to choose now because it's easier to accept the mind than to accept Guru. But at heart we know the Guru means well. We feel guilty and we say no, the spiritual master of the Guru means well for me. This is for my well-being. So we are connecting to the aspect of duty within ourselves. So he goes on. So he goes on to the third aspect and inaction means not performing one's prescribed duties. So you have your prescribed duties, but you don't have the courage to perform it. Ridai Dorlabya, weakness of heart. So these are the three categories of work that come. Prescribed duty, capricious work and inaction. These are the three levels. These are the three levels of consciousness that comes when one does work. So one has to choose which level of consciousness you're going to act on. <laughs> he goes on. The Lord advises that Arjuna not be fruitive, but that he perform his prescribed duties without being attached to the results. So Krishna is saying, I'm guiding you, Arjuna. And this is what I'm saying is best for you. It's not the easiest. It's actually the most difficult choice because... Fruit of results are immediate results. But Krishna is saying this is the best for you in the long run. Don't be attached to the fruit of results. Do your prescribed duty. And then he goes on. One who is attached to the results of his work is also the cause of his action. Thus he is the enjoyer or the sufferer of the results of such actions. So this is what we were talking about. That we only think of reaction. That I am entitled to my work. Yes. But if you think that you are entitled to the results of your work, the fruit then that creates bondage. And we know by human choice, we don't like the bad bondage. We like the good bondage. <laughs> so he's saying, whether you like the good or the bad, Arjun, you have to accept both. Therefore, both are binding. And nobody tells us that, that even good karma is binding. And we learned this we, when we spoke about cooking and feeding the hungry without offering the food. So the hungry get bound because they've accepted food and you also get bound because you cook the food or you part of the arrangements of the food. So you start incurring good karma. So you start adding more bondage to your good karma result. As we said, you become a karmic millionaire. <laughs> and this is binding. So he goes on, as far as the prescribed duties are concerned, they can be fitted into three subdivisions. Ah, so we're learning now. In the category of prescribed duties, there's a further three divisions. Let's see this. Namely, routine work, emergency work, and desired activities. So three things. Routine work, emergency work, and desired activities. What are these three? Routine work performed as Routine work performed as an obligation in terms of one's scriptural injunction without desire for results is action in the mode of goodness. 
work with results become cause of bondage therefore such work is not auspicious everyone has his propriety right in regard to prescribed duties but should act without attachment to the results so you can see the concept of work how deep it's assessed at the level of the bhagavad gita it's not just doing something and getting a result there's so many levels that are considered here and somebody who's introspective who's become an introspective sage in krishna's words <laughs> is a very deep person and this person is assessing work on so many different levels let's see further such disinterested obligatory duties doubtlessly lead one to the path of liberation so when one works in this way he understands how he is acting he understands how he is working therefore his shreya or his goal becomes liberation if you just do work without considering the results and who's getting the results and how it's coming then it's binding and one gets more and more entrenched in the material world so he goes on arjuna was therefore advised by the lord to fight as a matter of duty without attachment to the result his non participation in the battle is another side of attachment ah this is another trap of maya <laughs> that if you don't want to do something it means you are attached to the other side ah that's a very very interesting point attachment and aversion is two side of the same coin both are attachment but working in a dualistic opposite mechanism so when a certain duty is asked of you and you're obliged to do it and you don't want to do it by the principle of nature just like a coin has two sides the fact that you don't want to do this work means you're attached to this side you see the logic of that so it's a level of attachment and every form of attachment in the material world is binding so that starts to bind you do you see how scientific the understanding of work is that you may think no if i don't act i'm not acting therefore there's no work ah you are attached to not acting by that attachment you get bound <laughs> by not acting that is an attachment to the path of not acting and if you choose that that means it's by attachment that you're not choosing the path of work and therefore you'll still become bound <laughs> so whether you work you'll become bound or whether you don't work you'll become bound because both of those is two sides of the same coin both of those is attachment one is attached to not working and one is attached to working both of those give a binding result so don't think that if you're not going to act at oh i'm passive i'm not acting that there's no result no you attach to not acting therefore you also get a result <laughs> so unless you know about this by nature you're not going to understand this isn't this amazing he goes on such attachment never leads one to the path of salvation any attachment positive or negative is cause for bondage therefore fighting as a matter of duty was the only auspicious path of salvation for arjuna so you see because it's binding it's inauspicious so how then do we choose the path of auspiciousness it means to do your prescribed duty do your work 